the world's forests are home to many different inhabitants and play a pivotal role in the health and well-being of the whole planet. Let's take a closer look at all types of forests and why exactly they are so important. The forest can broadly be described as an area that has a large number of trees. I know this sounds kinda dumb, but as a general description it works. However, the Food and Agriculture Organization tried to put a number to it and defines a forest as an area with crown cover of more than 10% and a size of at least 0.5 hectares. Forests cover about 30% of the Earth's surface and contain an estimated 3 trillion trees, being home to 80% of the world's terrestrial biodiversity. They exist in extremely cold, burning hot, bone dry and super wet climates. To thrive in every single one of these climates, every type of forest has a special characteristic to survive and thrive. Generally speaking, they are three major types of forests, categorized broadly by their distance to the equator. Different latitudes mean different types of forests. There is the tropical forest, the temperate forest and the boreal forest. Let's first take a closer look at the tropical forest. Tropical forests can be found between the latitudes 23.5 north and 23.5 south. So they are most common in areas near the equator such as Southeast Asia, Sub-Saharan Africa and of course Central America with the biggest rainforest the Amazon. The temperatures stay somewhat stable throughout the year, ranging from 20 degrees Celsius to the low 30s. The humidity in these forests is extremely high and obviously it rains a lot. Most tropical forests, or also called rainforests, receive 200 to 250 centimeters of rain every year. That is 2000 to 2500 liters per square meter. Here are some comparisons to the amount of rain from places around the world to give you an idea on how much rain that really is. Tropical forests have the highest species diversity per area in the whole world, containing millions of different species. One square kilometer of an area can contain around 100 different species of trees alone, let alone other plants and all kinds of animals. The trees grow between 25 and 35 meters tall and mostly consists of large evergreen leaves that prevent too much sunlight from reaching the ground. Other plants, apart from trees, are vines, ferns, mosses, orchids and palm trees. Outside of the thousands and thousands of insect species in the rainforest, the other animals are mostly adapted to a life in big trees. Prominent examples are monkeys, snakes, frogs, lizards and several small mammals. Although the tropical forests are characterized by a huge biodiversity, the soil lacks most essential nutrients for plant growth. The soil is often several meters deep, but just a very thin layer on top of the soil contains all the nutrients from decaying plants and animals. This small layer sustains basically all the plant species of the rainforests. All the unused nutrients in the top layer get rapidly washed down due to all the rain. Temperate forests grow in the next latitude rings above and below the tropical forest zone and can therefore be mainly found in North America, Northeastern Asia and Europe. There are four subcategories within temperate forests. The moist conifer and evergreen broadleafed, the dry conifer, the Mediterranean and the temperate broad-leveled rainforest. Generally, all temperate forests experience four different well-defined seasons. The spring, summer, fall and winter with temperatures ranging from minus 30 degrees Celsius to over 30 degrees Celsius. The precipitation all year long ranges from about 750 to 1500 liters per square meter over one year including snow in the winter. For that reason, most of the trees living in temperate forests are deciduous, so they shed their leaves in the fall before the cold temperatures in the winter arrive. In that way, the tree can save energy in the harsher months. Another effect due to the fallen down leaves is a very fertile soil with a huge layer of organic material on top. The plants use that to extract nutrients. Prominent examples for temperate forest trees are maple, oak, beech, birch, willow or elm. Additionally, one can find coniferous species like pines or firs. Next to the different plant species, there are also lots of animals who are adapted to the four seasons as well. They can perfectly survive in cold winters and in warm or even hot summers. 
Common animals in temperate forests are small mammals like rabbits, bigger animals like foxes and deer, many species of birds including some birds of prey like hawks and owls, and predators like bobcats, wolves and even bears. Last but certainly not least we will talk about the boreal forest or also called taiga which can roughly be found between 50 and 60 degrees of latitude in the subarctic zone. Therefore they can be found in Canada and Alaska, huge parts of Scandinavia and Siberia. Unlike the temperate forests with four seasons, the taiga only experiences two distinct seasons. A short, moist and mildly warm summer and a long, dark, cold and dry winter, receiving only 380 to 1000 liters of precipitation per year, mainly in the form of snow. The temperatures range from ice cold minus 40 degrees Celsius to possibly around 20 degrees Celsius in the summer. Boreal forests stand on land that was shaped by glaciers which left its mark on the geology, hydrology and the soils of these places. Speaking of which, the soil is usually a very thin layer of nutrient-poor and acidic material. On top of that, the canopy lets very little light through, so the growing in the understories are mostly little. For all the reasons mentioned, boreal forests mainly consist of evergreen conifers with needles as leaves that can withstand the cold winters. Examples are pines, spruce trees and firs. Well adapted deciduous trees like willows and alders can also be found. Prominent examples for plants in the understories are blueberries and cranberries which provide a food source for a lot of different animals living in the boreal forest. All the animals are highly adapted to the cold and harsh environment, usually having thick fur or other ways of insulation against the freezing cold. Among those animals are big mammals like the moose and caribou, smaller mammals, different species of birds and bats, and also predators like bears, wolves, lynx and the wolverine. If you are interested in the strong, fearless and intelligent little animal, the wolverine, you should check out my last video where I talk about how well it is adapted to the cold north. Like we mentioned in the video before, forests have the greatest range of biodiversity of all biomes and are home to countless plants, animals and fungi. Especially the tropical forests experience a very dense biodiversity. Thanks to the ability to do photosynthesis and its effects, forests contribute greatly to the maintaining of the climate. Trees and other plants can absorb the greenhouse gas carbon dioxide and release oxygen back in the air, only using water from the ground and the light from the sun. You might have heard the saying before that forests, especially the huge rainforests like the Amazon in South America, are the lungs of our planet. This is a somewhat true statement since they are the world's largest storehouse of carbon dioxide after the ocean. There are many many communities and people on this planet that are highly dependent on different forests and what they have to offer including plants and animals. Like the Food and Agriculture Organization pointed out, 90% of the people living in extreme poverty are dependent on forests for at least part of their livelihoods. On top of that, most medicines and pharmaceuticals are products of plants derived from forests. Not to mention the many other ways that forests and especially wood is used in the world. Examples for that are paper and furniture. <laughs> Lastly, there are also ecological benefits, as forests help to avert soil erosion by minimizing the force of rainfall and also absorbing water with the roots, which also stabilizes the ground and prevents runoff and washing away of soil. Additionally, they act as a water filter. By collecting and storing water, they help with enhancing the atmosphere's humidity, which ultimately affects rainfall and temperature. So as you can see, forests do not only cover large areas of the Earth's surface with trees and other plants, they also have a lot of benefits for their inhabitants, humanity and the whole world in general. Therefore, it is more important than ever that we protect them from deforestation, forest degradation and other poor influences from human civilization. According to the FAO, it is estimated that 420 million hectares of forests have been lost to conversion to other land uses since 1990.
If you want to learn even more about the types of forests and the importance of them, check out the sources in the description box down below. On the way down there, it would be highly appreciated if you could click the like symbol to show us that you enjoyed the content. Also feel free to subscribe to the channel for more content like this. It is completely free and only takes a second to do. But most importantly, have an absolutely fantastic rest of your day. Thank you.